One of the most intriguing, interesting stories from my time in Vietnam have to do with the Wahau Buddhists, who I previously mentioned, and their founder, a man whose name was Win Fu Sho. And Win Fu Sho was a man born in a village named Wahau in Anjiang province in um, the late uh, 1930s. And in the uh, late 1930s and early 1940s, he becomes a religious holy man. There were signs of this as a young, very young boy, when he would interact with village elders and would tell them stories with seemingly religious, mystical meanings and using uh, vocabulary uh, amazing for someone his age of 12 years old. Reminded me of the story of, from the Bible of Jesus as a 12 year old interacting with the elders at the temple and giving stories with them. And Win Fu Sho, again like Jesus, as a young man goes up a mountain and spends several months on one of the mountains in that seven mountain area near Chow Duk and in Cambodia. And when he comes down, he is considered to be enlightened. And what I discovered enlightened meant was that in going to the mountain that he somehow absorbed into his body the spirit of a holy man from the past. The holy man from the past was uh, an individual who was known and for whom there were temples erected in Chow Duk. Uh, he was called Phak Te Te An, which means the holy prophet of Western Buddhism. He lived in, in 1849. And it was believed by these Buddhists that this holy man's spirit that had resided in him and he had done things rather miraculous in the 1840s had been transferred to some other holy men in the earlier part of the 20th century. And now that spirit which had returned up the mountain was being manifested in Win Fu Sho, who became known as Duk Te, Venerable Teacher. And Win Fu Sho as this enlightened teacher becomes a mystic, a mystical person, and who gives sermons and talks and people follow him and they become converts to his approach to Buddhism, a simplified Buddhism. So we don't need big temples. Uh, all we need to uh, be properly religious is to have a small, uh, uh, structure as well like a little temple in your front yard where you could give devotions. And uh, his sayings are being written down and by his followers. And he has military followers who bring their military forces with him. And this holy man, as he moves about the Mekong Delta up and down the Basak River, the lower branch of the Mekong, including in Duktan province where I'm senior advisor. The religion spreads everywhere. And you will find offices and it has its own political parties by the time in the 60s. But in the 1940s, as he's preaching, the French colonial powers consider him to be a troublemaker. And they arrest him and take him to Saigon. And they put him in with uh, psychiatrists 
and he converts the psychiatrists to be his followers. And it's claimed by some of the followers that he's able to work miracles, that he can cure the sick. He has a, a series of kind of uh, folk medicines that he will tell people to uh, eat these leaves, drink this special tea, this special concoction. And some even say he can raise the dead. And more miracles are attributed to him during these three or four years. And his followers become strongly, strongly anti-communist. And then as World War II comes to an end and the, uh, the Japanese who had been occupying much of Vietnam or leave and there's this struggle for power and uh, the communists are trying to take over the whole country. They're being resisted by the Wahao and other South Vietnamese. And suddenly one day, Win Fu Sho disappears. And it's believed uh, that the Communist Party has taken him and that they would execute him, and never to be seen again. And yet the Wahao followers believed he was still alive. They had papers that were signed by him purportedly, and they had copies of it. They gave me copies of this, uh, of how he uh, had, was still alive after the time when he was supposedly killed by the communists. So the Wahao burned with a belief in their uh, leader, this mystic Duktai, venerable teacher, and they were absolutely opposed to communists. Any communists who came, they would drive them out. So here I am, 1960s, 20 years later after Duktai has disappeared. I'm living and working in this Wahao milieu, want to understand, and I become enthralled with the story. I begin collecting documents. I'm going to write my doctoral dissertation about it. But I'm also, as someone who grew up as a Christian, so taken by the story. It seems so similar to the story of Jesus in, in the Bible. And I wondered, could I get insights? Were there insights to be had about how the followers of Duktai, the Wahao faithful, viewed him, not as a god, but as someone whom, whom the spirit now was in him, animated him. That spirit was different than who Win Fu Sho was as a human being born a human. He now had this other spirit within him. And I wondered, is that how the followers of, of Jesus saw him? When he went up to the mountain, did he get then the spirit of God, in their view, within him as he came down and preached and worked miracles and made converts? It was so intriguing, 12,000 miles from where I had practiced Christianity, to learn about something that might provide insights to help me understand about the central figure of the Christian religion that I had followed all my life.